Hello, it's John Heaton, and uh, a couple of people have been requested that I review some Queen albums, and the reason I haven't done so any so far is because I was didn't own any of them on vinyl. Shame on me. Well, I do, did. I do own a kind of cheap copy of the game, which I found in Hungary. I think it was a Yugoslav copy, but only have a few of the, I have several of their albums, but only on CD. Um, but yesterday, I picked up this on new vinyl and uh, this was one of those albums jazz uh, which I'd always seen at the time when it was released and always try, uh, thought about getting it and, but for, for some reason never never got around to buying it on vinyl Parallel Lines by Blondie was another one it took me years to get on vinyl um, so I, when I saw it yesterday I couldn't resist it and uh, I did some research online to check that it came with the original poster and once once that was confirmed that sealed the deal for me um, I'm very happy to have it I, I like the way it's uh, the word jazz is embossed there on the, the front and the back apparently this was some pattern which Roger Taylor had seen on the Berlin Wall or something similar so that inspired that it's a gatefold sleeve uh, not a particularly good photo there of Queen in the studio, not particularly interesting. Could have done more with the gatefold there, I think. Um, it's on wonderful 180 gram vinyl. But I have to say, when I played it, it it's it's hard, It's also what's it, what they call a half speed master, which I think is, is obviously it's supposed to improve the quality. But I think, I'm not sure if it does with, on, all records or just this one or just on my hi-fi but I found the, the the level of sound very soft and I had to turn it up pretty loud to get to the, le the volume I wanted and uh, I, I thought I mean the quality was fine it's just very low in the mix and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if others have found that with this record or not or maybe it's just my hi my hi-fi is not particularly good my final setup this is a picture of the band uh, so this is the follow-up to uh, News of the World from 76. So this one released in November 78, number two in the UK, number six in the US. Um, and what they did to promote this album is uh, one of the singles, one of the first, I think it was the first single, was the double A side, Fat Bottom Girls and Bicycle Race. They staged a bicycle race of nude women and it was, I just was reading up on it, it was actually filmed in Wil Wimbledon Stadium. And uh, a couple of amusing stories, well, that the story in itself is quite amusing, but Halford's, the bicycle shop where they got the bicycles from, they made, when they tried to return, when they returned the bicycles after the shoot, they made um, the record company or whoever was paying for it, they made them pay for the instead of renting the bicycles, they made them pay for the saddles because they'd been used in an improper manner, uh, i.e. without clothes. So that must have cost a little, um, a fair amount. And then, so th the lyrics come with the album. And then, and I think I'm allowed to show this on YouTube, it comes with the, with the poster. So there it is. Uh, str strangely enough, that poster, when this CD came out, the poster was missing from the, the artwork, so I don't know whether... And then when this same picture was used for the Bicycle Race single, the nude bottom was was deemed to be uh, too excessive, so they, they put a pair of red pants on, on that nude bottom. Uh, otherwise it might have got banned, I suppose, or not, not shipped to the shops. Um, Anyway, so that, that's an interesting uh, bit of packaging there. Um, but some of the reviews were mixed at the time. Dave Marsh in, in the Rolling Stone magazine uh, said, talking about the track Fat Bottom Girls, that they treated women not as sex objects, but as objects, period. Brackets the way the band regards people in general. And then they went on to conclude that Queen was the first truly fascist rock band. <laughs> Whereas other reviewers have been a bit kinder, The Guardian, in a retrospective review, said jazz was hysterical in every sense of the word, but the 
music press at the time failed to get it, particularly in the US, it says. Um, and then retrospectively, I think uh, All Music Guide says it's one of their best. And in these polls that you have of Queen's best albums, it's regularly, it's always in the top five, number three or four, usually. And I think it's probably my favorite, probably because it's the first one I remember when it came out. Uh, and uh, it's, got, it's got so many great singles. I mean, let's go through the track. So we've got, and it's interesting how they, Freddie sings most of it, but he, get, he, he gets a lot of support, he, as he always did, from the other members of the band who, co -write, who write the songs along with him, or separately, they, they contribute to the songwriting process, should we say. And uh, it starts off with Mustafa, which is a wonderful, wonderfully atmospheric number with some, some wacky lyrics, which actually not included in the lyric sheet, although there are lyrics, but mainly in foreign language. Um, and uh, they perform this in concert quite often, quite often as a, uh, a prequel to uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Instead of doing that complicated harmonies at the beginning of that song, they did the, uh, the Mustafa song and then leading into Mama Just Killed a Man. Uh, so that's interesting. I think it's a really strong opener. Fat Bottom Girls, uh, I know people, if people get upset by the lyrics and that's up to them, I think it's harmless fun and it's, uh, I think it's a, it's a good number. But I, I, again, it's one of these songs I had to turn up loud on the record. And even when I was playing the CD, it's not particularly well mixed or well produced. I don't know, maybe I'm just alone in thinking this, but uh, th that guitar is lovely and crunching, and, but it just needs to be a bit louder in my opinion. Um, Jealousy is one of those timeless Freddie Mercury ballads, um, which he does so well uh, with nice harmonies and then Bicycle Race. It's a pretty innovative song with nice tempo changes and the nice sound effects with the bicycles and the nice guitar from, from Brian, as always on a Queen album, one of the highlights. Uh, then we got If You Can't Beat Them from John Deacon. So he would write two songs on this album, and it's, this is not one of his most distinguished, but it's quite, it's a pretty decent song and it chugs along nicely. Let, let Me Entertain You, again, not one of the best out songs on the album, but nice guitar from, from Brian. Dead on Time, Open Side 2, and uh, is a good up-tempo rocker with some great drumming from Roger Taylor. And although this song probably would have sounded good live, they, they never did play it live, apparently. Um, In Only Seven Days is a, is a stronger number from Deacon, the second one of his. And this is slightly reminiscent of Spread Your Wings from um, News of the World. Uh, good song, atmospheric, and he rightly passes over the lead singing duties to Freddie because Freddie's the better singer. But John Deacon, throughout Queen's career, came out with some great songs, including Another One Bites the Dust on the following album. Um, Dreamer's Ball uh, is a, a Brian May song sung by Freddie, tribute to Elvis Presley, who died the previous year. Uh, really nice song. Re really, it's played on acoustic from Brian, but then you've got this very distinctive Brian May guitar solos um, all the way through, but kind of slightly subdued in the mix, but very effectively in, in this case, because uh, sometimes it's hard to combine electric guitar with acoustic, but they do it really well here. Fun It is a fun track from Roger Taylor, and it's uh, kind of, again, preceding what would come on the later album, The Game, with Another One Bites the Dust in terms of the, the funky beat at the beginning. Uh, not a very effect, not as effective a bass line on this one as on another one bites the dust, but uh, it's a fun track and uh, yeah, F Freddie sings it well and uh, I like it. It's one of those lost album tracks. Uh, Leaving home ain't easy is a nice ballad from Brian May where he actually does get to sing. And that's nice. Uh, and then don't stop me now. <laughs> what can I say? One of the Queen's all-time classics. I was reading that it got voted as the ultimate driving song on the, on the program Top Gear, uh, the Jeremy Clarkson show. Uh, I just think in every sense it's a classic song. It was a huge hit single. Freddie's playing piano great on it. Brian May does a lovely guitar solo. And uh, 
great lyrics. Um, very uplifting song. And then more of that jazz is a kind of uh, workout, instrumental workout towards the end with a few lyrics and a few um, snippets from the songs on the album kind of rounds it off quite nicely. So this is jazz from 1978. I think it's one of their best albums. I think they would struggle to match this, this, the standard of this in later works, although the game was a decent follow-up. Uh, so thanks for watching. See you next time.